<laughs> oh my goodness. The Counter-Strike hasn't even started yet. We do have Ian Sniper-Turner joining me and Chad sponge Burchill. I don't know how they've got any voice left. Hi, good morning. Good afternoon, what is it? It's afternoon. It's definitely afternoon. afternoon right okay. now. Yeah, no, here's the thing, right? We love Counter-Strike. It doesn't matter if our boys are up on the stage or not. We just love to cheer, and they're going to give it to us again today, Alex. Yeah, they've been competing, trying to get that best crowd tag, and, of course, not forgetting that they are trying to also win over those players. There's a lot, it's a lot of travel involved, and there's a reason that they're going to want to keep coming back, and it's not just going to be for the prize person, the prestige. It's also going to be for the crowd and that notch on the Intel Grand Slam belt. Ian Sniper-Turner, Chad Sponge, Birchill. Gentlemen, we painted such quite a bleak picture of Ty Lu and what they're going to be capable of here. Let's focus first on... The, the light at the end of the tunnel. The silver linings. The silver linings. Ian, a lot of talk about this Ben Tet fella. Well, well, obviously, I mean, like you said, I've been watching them for quite a long time this last year, and uh, Ben Tet has just been a star time and time again. Uh, you'll see he's going to be just an absolute highlight reel for all of his previous games. He's the number one rated player for this event so far. Uh, but, you know, like we said, they've not really come up against a phase yet, and I think that's where his medal will really get tested. I mean... Uh, coming up against, you know, maybe a Carrigan who fires up or something like that, that's where you're going to need to look to Ben Tett and pull off those JKS sort of clutches. Look, for them to get to this position and him to be the top-rated fragger, he has to continue that in this phase matchup, right? This is just the way it is. These are fantastic highlights. He's been playing great throughout. Being on the stage right now, it's a completely different atmosphere. And if he's going to choke, he's going to crumble. What else do they have, right? <laughs> this next highest-rated player on their team is somebody, and he's the entry fragger. Who? Ooh, uh, we're going to start that. That's, that's the last one. That's the last right, one. All right, first one. and last. But he has to be the star. No one else on their team can really step up to that. Accurate with the AWP, he can have his moments, but like I mentioned before, his interview about the fact of the matter is he's going to be more of a supportive AWPer. Well, How's that going to play? Well, this could be a good thing for a player like Mo, who's been struggling, and like you said, since he stopped AWPing, we haven't really seen any yeah. impact from him. So this could be just a notch in the belt for Ty Lu that they needed to get through. Uh, I think extra, he's, he's a pretty good AWPer, or accurate as you want me to call him. Thank you. Uh, he's a pretty good AWPer, and I think, uh, you know, while Splashkey didn't really deliver in playing for boot, I think there is an opportunity here for him to make a name for himself, obviously against the likes of Guardian. Because I think there has been quite the mix-up. We've got a change of in-game leader from when yes. they've seen him yeah. in international tournaments. We've also got that change of, of AWPer. We've got this two new talents that we are going to be talking a lot about. And the Tali roster prior to their arrival was quite a, an absent conversation. It was they're here, they qualified, they're perhaps the best in their region, but there's not much more. Semi-final, this, this is the biggest stage they'll, they've found themselves on sure, so far yeah, in their yeah, careers. Yeah. The question is, how does that affect you? I, I guess, you know, that has to play into things. They're obviously going to be nervous, right? But the, the, you're just going to have to play either off the crowd or you're just going to try, to try and forget they even exist because yeah. this is an opportunity for you to really prove that you are a contender. And for Benta, if he can play as well in the group stages as he's going to do on this stage, he can prove he's a legit star, like yeah. he's a legit fragger, and that's something which he should be wanting to do. Now, a conversation that sometimes gets had when we talk about Tai Lu and some of the Asian teams is that they have a different approach to the sure. game. Now, Chad, you did select something. I don't know if it's, it's in a similar vein to that. They exactly. Have... Oh, perfect. There we well, go. Well, it's just these little tweaks, right? So we all know the Mirage AX cute time and time sure. again. You do the smoke wall, you, you smoke the stairs, you just attack the bomb site. One thing that I want to point out here is their stairs smoke. It's actually going to be a jump smoke here from somebody which is going to bounce and land a little bit more shallow on the stairs. It's not going to land on the top. Oh. Now, you've seen teams and players sitting on those stairs and killing the planner through the gap of the smoke as they cross. This is just one adjustment that they've made where that's completely impossible, completely taken away. A very minor detail, something a lot of people wouldn't really notice. But if you're like a Crims who plays that position and you get denied, where he's getting cheeky kills sure. from every single time, that's one thing that's going to play away from losing a guy running into the bomb site trying to get the bomb down. I suppose as well, if you are playing stairs, the only way to actually challenge that is to push through a smoke exactly. on stairs. Into the molly. And this is the thing, it forces you to play retake. You want to get rid of as many gaps in these smokes as possible and Tyler have managed to do that here. Another fun thing to note with how they approach this round is most times you don't want to put all three of your players towards the A ramp, but they have absolutely no problem doing that. They play off each other, they feed off the trades, and I think even if Utility came in, the, the team they're playing, SK here, wouldn't be expecting all three members to peak from A ramp, and this is just little changes, little tweaks in gameplay. Now, Ian knows more than anybody. We've been around for as long as anyone in Counter-Strike. Watching the Chinese teams, the South Korean teams, they always bring a little bit of flair. Now, this is the thing. In 1.6, they were super aggressive. In CSGO, you don't have the same way to adapt, but these little tweaks, these little changes of smokes, little yeah. strategy adjustments, it's fantastic to see. And it's worth mentioning that that highlight you're using, it looks like SK are dominating them. They won that game in overtime. They yeah. beat the likes of SK, just albeit with somewhat of a hamstring at the moment. They seem to have lost some of their uh, Brazilian flair with mm -hmm. the addition of, of Stewie. But I think the, the next kind of conversation has to be, what on earth do you pick versus FaZe Clan? I mean, where does this map veto go? Well, I mean, uh, Tyloo has versus FaZe before in a few other tournaments sure. like Star Series, Epicenter, back when they had Bondic. And it seemed to be Cache, Inferno, Mirage in any sort of order every single time. Mm -hmm. So 
I think what also FaZe try to avoid is versing the underdog on the same map time and time again. I noticed that in their veto that, you know, sometimes they'll get rid of Cache, sometimes they'll get rid of Train, and, and sure. it's just so that, uh, you know, Tyloo can't get the same maps, but then it ended up being the same three anyway. Or they played the same two. It's always Inferno and then, uh, you know, Mirage. So they're the two that uh, I think FaZe are going to be worried about that, you know, Tyloo's done their research, and obviously... Phase, they would have definitely looked at that SK game, maybe picked sure. up on that smoke. So it'll be interesting to see if they go for like a boost over the smoke or something like that. I mean, Chad, you, you, you've been, you tend to do your research. You sit there with a coffee and look at maps. Did you get anything else? Any other nuggets <laughs> out of that one? Tyler, obviously banning nuke here. It's something that they just don't 100%. play. Something they've okay. never touched. For yeah. Phase, they're probably still going to get rid of Overpass. This is where the veto, I think, for Phase is probably a little bit more interesting because they play to the middle ground of the map pool, right? They want to play Brawly maps because their strats have been looking very, very messy. Yep. And they're walking out here, they're getting ready, they're getting set up, and the crowd's still going nuts. But I think, as Ian said, it's going to be basically those three maps, unless the Dust 2 curveball comes in. Yeah. I really want to see it. Why don't we take a look at the first bands, just so we can see whether or not that overpass is as predicted, and there then bye-bye nuke. Okay, so we've got the easy bits out of the way. The question you were raising is, does the Dust 2 curveball get I, picked? I think Ty Lu want Dust 2. They've been leaving it in their veto as the underdog, obviously, this whole tournament, and I think they would have practiced it. Okay. So it's it's definitely a curveball possibility. That would be that would be enough to convert me into a three maps if not a Tyloo. Sure. Win. Look, the problem there is even if you have practiced it, you're playing against Nico, Guardian, <laughs> Rain, Carrigan yeah. exists. Right? These guys can just play any map. The, the chemistry, the mid-round decision making, all those things is where FaZe have been thriving throughout this tournament. They don't even need the strategies. You, you saw how sloppy it was for them on Cache. I think it's just going to be the Inferno pick from Tyloo and uh, the Cache pick from FaZe. Okay, well, let's take a quick look and then we can kind of continue to brainstorm as we do reveal. It will be Cache and Inferno. So we're staying boring, we're staying vanilla, and they've floated the dust too into the second veto phase. This is where, I guess, it gets a little less interesting. The chances are we're going to wave goodbye. Well, the thing is here is that um, Tyloo have played uh, FaZe on cache before. Yeah, they got smashed, right? They got flushed. But the thing is here, that Dust2 is still in there and there's a possibility. And you were saying, you know, FaZe are known for their mid-round calls, Chad. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, on a map like Dust2, how influential is that sort of play style? This could just be perfect for Tyloo if they get it. Now, yeah. FaZe did leave Dust2 cool. in the map pool against Greyhounds and they laughed. And I don't think they expected to have to play Dust2, but they did, obviously, when Greyhounds got nuked. So. Let's have a look. Last map. It's Will interesting that the drum roll. Nah, just the boring. Uh, just the boring Cache Inferno Mirage, uh, as we expect. <laughs> ruined it. So get it as the third again. So if we actually get that far, it could be interesting. But look, <sighs> it's going to be such a tall task for Tyler to even be competitive in this one. I, I think the, the caveats for them, the things that have to stand out, is Ben Tat has to continue his form, and everybody else just needs to chime in and do the best that they can. They're going to have those little strats. They're going to be prepared. But FaZe Clan are building confidence throughout, right? You That's look true. at them ramping up. All their play Nico's, I think he's had a, a plus one rating in every single game. Guardians had it in nine maps, and then Rain has had it in eight, eight or something yeah. along those lines. Doesn't get talked about much, but exists. Sure. On Cache against Fnatic, I feel like he really stood up, and that was why they were able to get that map win uh, on a pick that was probably made for Fnatic. So Cash, we can accept, will likely go the way of FaZe. That Inferno, I mean, have we seen much of Tyloo's Inferno? I'm trying to remember. I played it on Ren uh, against Renegades. They played against Renegades, right? And how much yeah. of a stomping was that? Let's not forget. 16-12, I think. Yeah, 16, wow, look at the memory. Look yeah. at him go. Yeah, I did my research. Yeah. Okay. Funny that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think maybe the first map, uh, something I guess we need to note is that Carrigan has been, he's not rated highly in terms of the stats, but the kills he have been, has been getting are multi-kills. They're two pieces to like stop a plant or to go on a retake. Just high impact. Exactly. And those are things which, you know, if they don't continue, maybe that's going to be a problem. There is a trio there, probably the, the biggest star trio in this entire event. We've mentioned it time and time again. Carrigan, Rain, Guardian. Yeah. Carrigan. They're just going to get done. Not Carrigan. Nico. I was going to say. What? I was like, it. damn, that's a new Carrigan's, trio. He's in the trio. He's in the trio. No, I'm sure that he's going to, he's definitely well, going to carry his weight. Yeah. yeah. Well, indeed, someone that's all too familiar with carrying his own weight is the main man, Stunner. He does it all. He's a Swiss Army knife of broadcast, and now he's heading up to The View. Let's check in with him. <laughs> you know what? Thanks, Alex. Uh, I've been called worse than an Army knife, so I, I do appreciate that. Either way, I'm sending with a new face here, a fresh face. We got Tweed A, man. How was the travel in? All smooth, all good. All too good. Well, Australia seems to love you just like they love their Counter-Strike, and, uh, well, today's no different. We're going to be jumping into our first semifinal. A little bit of FaZe and Tai Lu action. Who do you got in this one? Well, FaZe is looking absolutely shaky in the group stage. Oh. I, do, I do think so. It's not the FaZe that we were expecting to see. And then Tai Lu, the Dark Horse, in the group stage. If you look at them playing names from the group stage, from the get-go, you do not see Tai Lu going all the way through to the semifinals. So I guess we're going to be in for a treat. I would have always said good luck to uh, Tai Lu and have fun to FaZe. But right now I'm saying good luck to both of them. 
Good luck to both of them. How about this? I'm thinking we break it down just a little bit further. Do I have any Guardian fans in the house tonight? Any FaZe fans at all? Okay, there we go. Let's take a little bit of a look here because Bintat over on the Ty Lue side has been on a tear this event. Uh, Guardian had his uh, shots yesterday. It was all making sense. Let's take a look at the numbers, though. If we look at the, the ADR across the round, Bintet's in charge there. But you just can't dis discount Guardian. You can't do it. You never can do that. Guardian, in its own right, has got 74 free average damage. Right now, on the other hand, he's uh, Bintet is going on that one. Multi kills 20. There's nine on the other hand. So, you know, clutch is one, free to seven. Three what to seven, expect? yeah, but I mean it's Guardian, right? Yeah, right. You can you cannot discount the you fact that Guardian has came to play and win the Intel Extreme Masters in Sydney. Now we did ask you at home to get involved, and well, we're going to take a look at some of those polls right about now because you were involved using hashtag Play Faster, and well, it looks like uh, Phase is the favorite. Everyone, thoughts? Expected. Expected. Well, how about this? It's just about time to jump right into this matchup. Let's go ahead and make some noise and jump into our first semifinal. Because we feel really happy, and this is like the first story for ASEAN scene to be be at top four in playoff. Nice. We just beat SK, and then we beat Frontline 2-0, and then because of that, I think we gain a lot of confidence, and then we practice a lot, we fix our communication a lot when we prepare so well for this match. We just gonna want to show to our fans that we can be more better, and then we can beat them. We practice with a lot of your Europe, Europe team, so I think for now it's like we know how to play. Uh, play against them. We know how to bring our tactics against them. I think for my team, especially like I think we already like same with your team, so we don't think too much. This is my experience to play in in front of a big crowd, especially I'm Sydney. We know that I'm Sydney is a fucking good crowd, right? We, we have a high chance to win this tournament, I think. I mean, it was 15-5, but we we somehow took the pause, and I I think I started to believe in karma for a moment when it came to 15-14, but we finished it and yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice to beat them because they beat us in the finals of Katowice, so it's nice to, to get this revenge back, and, but Fnatic are a great team and this time we won and probably next time they will win and it's, it's hard to predict, but it was a good game and I think we were stronger this time. Uh, it's always nice to have a crowd that has some kind of spirit and emotions, so Kerrigan is showman. Kind of, so it's nice that the people are joining him in, in this kind of stuff, so it, it's very nice. I mean, Tailu surprised very, a lot of teams and uh, it's surprising that they're in the semi-final, so I mean, it's hard to, to prepare for a team that is underdog and, and they're not playing in so many tournaments, so we just need to check what they did at this event and we will get ready to, to play them. I'm looking forward to play a good game and uh, I always like to play Asian teams because it's something new and you can find out new stuff they, they come with up. So uh, I'm looking forward to an exciting match and hopefully it will be a nice game for everyone. Alrighty then, here we are, day two of the Intel Extreme Masters in Sydney in the Kudos Bank Arena. Are we ready for this? We certainly are, the raw emotion of yesterday, what a day it was. First day on the big stage here, not the first day of the tournament. We saw the Renegades almost make it through to the semi-finals. Is it a watershed moment? I think so. Speaking to Chad, he says the Renegades will be back bigger and better. But today, it's all about the semi-finals. Both of these matchups, the team's looking to get through to the final tomorrow, which also has the caches in it, to win this trophy, the 2018 IEM Sydney Masters Trophy. So then, looking around this arena, I see a ton of shirts. Have we got any Tai Lu fans? There's a whole gaggle, gaggle down here, China number one. Have we got any FaZe fans? This is going to be a great best of three. So let's meet the teams. Please welcome Tai Lu and FaZe.
So in Tyloo, you've got a team that have scrapped to be here at this moment, on this stage, in the semi-finals. In phase, you've got a team that righted a wrong. They beat Fnatic in the quarters. They got their revenge. This rejig lineup has made it through to today. So then, you dogs, I want to hear a woof of who you think is going to win. Is it going to be Tai Lu? Is it going to be FaZe? Is it Tai Lu? Is it FaZe? It's time. Are we ready? Are we ready? Let's get it on. It's an interesting story, isn't it? A Bosnian, a Norwegian, a Dane, a Slovakian, a Swede, all just played a video game at home and then end up wearing some matching jerseys, playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars in Sydney. Quite the adventure eSports has taken us on, and up against them, you have the Chinese mix-up. Not only do you have the three from China, you've also got Bentet and Accurate now throwing in a curveball from the Indonesian region. It's an exciting combination, it's an exciting mix, and it's quite the uh, juxtaposition on that stage. Let me go one step further for you, Alex. We all know these names in the server, we all know the players who are up there right now, but if I said to you, the highest rated player in the past three months in the server was Bentet, out of all of them. Out of all of them, not just on his team. Out of all 10 players was Ben Ted. I think you might uh, have something to say about that. <laughs> Absolutely, I would. I mean, these are huge names in Counter-Strike, and it, doesn't, it feels silly repeating it, but Ian, when you look at the likes of Nico, Rain, Carrigan, Guardian, and of course, Exist now standing in for Olof Meister, these are names that are synonymous with success in the Counter-Strike timeline. Yeah, and I mean, look, I've played against them. I'm sure Chad has as well. These guys, they give you goosebumps when you come up against them. They have experience. They have an answer for everything, except I think the wild card here is Agent CS. And I think, you know, that's why Ben Tet has this star rating as well. He's just been dominant in the whole Asian region. When he goes overseas or when he versus overseas, maybe inside China, uh, that's where sometimes he doesn't really reach that platform that he usually does, but he still plays very well. Yeah. And I just want to point out, I don't think nerves are going to be a big deal for Tai Lu. You were talking about how this stage might be the first. They play in some pretty big arenas in China. Uh, they have a huge you know, scene over there that we don't really see or get to know a lot about. They do play overseas quite often, and I think uh, you know these guys also don't really get phased by nerves. I really like uh, the positive sentiment that Ian's throwing out here, but I'm going to take a realist route. I'm going to give you, everybody at home, uh, kind of the way that you're actually going to look at this. This is going to be an absolute mauling. This yeah. will be done in two. Okay. Phase, as they've been ramping up throughout, I'm just expecting them to carry that into this. You know, this is the difference, and, and I have experienced this firsthand time and time again. When you are such a stark favorite, when you are that huge titan standing there on the other side, you just play that disrespectful brand of Counter-Strike. And unless Tai Lu can stop them early, yeah. they're going to run all over them. Well, that's the kind of, ty that's the kind of CS that FaZe have played against Tai Lu before. Uh, you know, Nico just running up mid on Mirage and just taking them down. They're not expecting it. This sure. time, I think they should be expecting it. They have to shut down that random aggression. It does feel like they've done their homework as well. I mean, you heard in the interview there from Acura, he was saying that we do feel well prepared. And I mean, I, sometimes I feel like that, that's thrown around, the term well prepared by many a player yeah. and many an interview. But I truly do believe that Tidu haven't got here by accident. You can be well prepared. I think the difference is Ian noted the European style of Counter-Strike and how you prepared for everything in terms of just decision making. The same thing can't be said for that of the Chinese, right? Sure, they get yeah. to play against the Europeans. Sure, they get to go for boot camps, do all that kind of fun stuff. But they haven't been born into the CS of that level. They've actually just had to adopt it over time. And when you're learning in that, in that regard, it's like you look at what other people do and you have to make your own decision as to why they actually do that, right? This is, it's a weird thing. It's like JKM last night, and it all comes down to like that second nature that you can't teach. Sure. And for Tai Lu, they get away with just shooting people so often. That whole like organizing retakes like we saw Renegades do time and time again, where you just had to work together. Yeah. That's something you won't see from Tai Lu. Instead, it's just gonna be, you know, people going for jewels, people getting kills where they can. And I mean, look, they get away with it in this region, but obviously FaZe is a whole different beast and yeah. they'll need to step up their game. And one, some players in, in particular, there's one man who hasn't quite been pulling his weight for Tyloo ever since moving away from the primary AWPA position. It's uh, none other than Captain Mo. Yes. I want to see him playing as he used to. He had this crazy sensitivity, fast reflexes, and I want to see him back on it. Chad would know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've coughed it a couple times. Many an Asian minor have yeah. I seen Captain Mo single-handedly no respect the Australian. Yeah. So Where I did he come know. from? Where did he go? Where did you come from, Captain Mo? Oh, hello, Alex. Thank you. I like that one. Yeah, I, I never like get that to one. Cast, give, so give him free stuff the to the crowd. 
<laughs> Look, I think the thing is, you're not going to see the old version of him. I think the fact of him giving up the AWP role to someone else, someone who can wield it a little bit better, and him, he's a very experienced player, so him doing the supportive stuff isn't necessarily a bad thing. Somebody, for me, is one of the guys who uh, had a lot of influence in his aggression on the CT side. I remember him pushing up with P90s and stuff, Alex. I'm looking forward to seeing this one. Now, I just need to get this pronunciation right. I think you call it Keish, is that right? Okay, right, it's gonna be Keish, and we're gonna see if Tyloo can weather the storm of FaZe Clan. Henry, Harry, make some noise for the crowd. Thank you so much, Alex. Yes, it is the first semi-final of the day. FaZe Clan versus Tyloo, and we'll be not going into the action, of course. It's difficult to make that happen, but uh, we'll be waiting as they get ready. It will be phase to start on the T side. Tyloo, CT here, and we'll have a look at the vice. Harry, who have you got for this one? Uh, this map, I'm thinking phase, but uh, I'm going to go with Tyloo, Henry. I want to try and throw a curveball. I'm thinking it's going to be a 2-1. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise! Phase clan purchasing two smokes, flashbangs, molotovs, and it looks like we might have a cheeky B Russian store. They're going to send four players to this side of the map. And let's see whether Tyloo can fend them off. It's going to exist to show presence towards middle. Damage inflicted, and Didi waiting to receive towards B. They're going to go rushing towards him, Didi. Forced off the angle exists, still pushing forward over in middle, and he is so good on this map. It is when well, you don't want to pick against him, but look at Didi. He's found the first kill, Guardian. Does manage the response. That's the bomb drop down in CT. And actually, FaZe, they've taken some time to go ahead and get it. One plant is going to go in. Tyloo, four on four in the retake. Nico, a name that needs no introduction. He's going to be holding the cross as they try to head on in. And somebody is there. First kill going to go the way of Nico. Trades do come through for Tyloo, though. They want to try and retake this site. And Carrigan does all he can, but it's on to exist. And he was so good for FaZe yesterday on this map. Now he's got to clutch it out 1v2, but they've stopped the E-Fuse and Captain Mo. He gets away with that one, Henry. He certainly does. Exist does get the final frag, but the round slips away. The smoke on top of the bomb. It's a very common purchase these days. You can get that veil as you go for the full five-second defuse there. One player to defend you. It can work out many times. As you can see, Exist that one bullet towards the upper area. If he does hit that, if it does do enough damage, he probably wins a round, but it wasn't quite. As we get to round number two, I'm assuming, yeah, a forced by from FaZe. Considering they killed all five players there, they're going to bring out the AKs, the CZs. It's that lack of respect that uh, the boys in the desk were talking about. Carrigan had to drop so much, he's only got a Glock, no armor. He doesn't even get a flashbang for his trouble. So we'll have to see whether Nico will be able to open things up. It's accurate to go down first, and they weren't expecting the force by just yet. Somebody's in an awful position. He's going to have to lie and wait and see if Rain will check it by the squeaky door, but he recovers. Now has to fall back. He's going to get two frags here. Not quite as Guardian comes out the squeaky door. Ben Tet. Not low yet, but only with that UMP. Good flank coming through from the mid entrance. Yeah, Didi is the linchpin of this round for Tai Lu. He's managed one and that's now got FaZe cornered. But FaZe battling from the corner. This is where they're at their strongest. They have them backed in. Carrigan with that famous one minute on the clock and time is plentiful here for FaZe. It's that flank being held down by Didi that does throw some problems into the mix. Certainly does. We'll have a look as to whether. Didi's position will yield him the kill he's looking for. Guardian is low and walks right into his crosshead there. Advantage now for Tai Lu. Huge round for them to win, considering the force by coming in from phase early. Most teams go for the AKs in the third. Take a bit of a curve ball here. Dantep waits on the A side, time ticking away now. Carrigan hoping that Didi pushes further. Nico can't hit the shot now, he's low. This round doesn't even look possible for phase at this point. Now nah, Nico and Carrigan both tagged up so low and well, they found Didi. They've only got 15 seconds to get into the bomb site, though. Carrigan, he's got the bomb on his back. They're going to have to find these kills almost instantly. And Buntet, Captain Mo, they lock it down. Tai Lu, they manage to find a second round. And that's going to be now full eco for FaZe. Not really much they can do with this one. Number three should be a walk in the park for Tai Lu. They're going to have the M4s, the save UMPs, and MP9 for accurate. And we'll have a look at FaZe get any sort of grenades here. Nothing at all, really. Just the P250 for Carrigan. That's about it. These sort of rounds, the objective is to really get the bomb down. We have seen FaZe win one of these rounds before, so uh, we'll see. 
whether they can do anything with it. It's very unlikely. There is one more PT-50 brought into the mix. That's going to be Nico. And let's go towards A. Wait for the initial grenade. See if any CTs want to push like this. And we'll be accurate now. Throwing the grenade. He did spot a couple of them. And they'll probably commit in the next five seconds or so. Ooh, that's a big nade. And yeah, these SMGs should just chuck down phase. No, actually, somebody, a bit of a TK, a bit of a power struggle, perhaps. And luckily enough, you've got Buntet here just to mop the round up, gets it back under control. It's Ty Lu, they win the pistol, they convert the next two, but now the buy does come in for phase. Yeah, but they're going to be struggling here. They won't have the full buy. And when I say full buy, Guardian won't be able to get the AWP here. He'll be down to the rifle, which is fine. He's still very proficient with that. Here's a replay of somebody farming the cash. A couple of team kills in there as well. That's going to be fine. Round four, and we'll see whether FaZe will bring something nice and fast to the table. That's what I'd expect. Tyloo might go for an aggressive stance as well, considering he's got a bit of a bonus round here, the UMP and the FAMAS save. No early boost just yet, but Bente, there it is. It does come in eventually. Guardian will be going for this. Smoke towards Connector, all the same. And it looks like a very standard default exists watching the B storage area. Tyloo waiting for the spam to finish, the reload to come in, and then they'll go for the boost. Still taking a bit of damage there. Will be somebody to get up it's fumbling it completely. What is going on here? I think that's uh, a big cancel at this point. They throw in the incendiary, they might better give it another go, but I think it's best off just playing a standard setup here. Yeah, they, they had to dismantle the boost, and uh, well, they're going to send somebody up into main. And actually, there's no one keeping an eye on this from FaZe. He hears all the footsteps up above him. Guardian still on the boost now, going to drop down a Buntet. Double kill for him over in mid. He sent FaZe away. And now Nico has been waiting. Oh, he's Ooh. done. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe he's not going to check it. He goes walking by, and somebody, his patience is rewarded. Just Carrigan and Exist left, but Henry Exist is so proficient on cash. This is what feels like his home map. And Carrigan's been good in the clutch, so there is a chance here. We'll see. They don't really have much to work with here. A couple of smokes. We'll see whether it's enough to get them access to the bomb site. Incendiary deployed, and that might send them back. And Captain Murray's a guaranteed frag right there. Carrigan left in the one versus five. It's a clean sweep for Tyloo. As they find their fourth round, Muddy starting to get in an incredibly good spot. Remember, they came in with a UMP and a FAMAS. That was a bonus round. Then Ted has shut it all down. They go towards middle. He's not even flashed. He's got no real troubles there getting the double spray down. Lovely stuff by him. You can see the money dropping for FaZe. This is their pick as well. You'd expect them to be able to run away with this, but Deagles, no armor for now. We'll have maximum loss bonuses for the next. Exist does go for the helmet. No grenade to speak of, and Ty Lu, they've got a great amount of cash here. You can see they've got $6,000 on DD, eight and a half on Captain Mo. They haven't even brought out the AWP yet. This looks like almost guaranteed win for them, so fantastic start. Couldn't get any better. Exactly what Ty Lu needed. Sure, they had a great run in the group stages, but getting on the big stage, different kettle of fish altogether. FaZe very experienced up here, Tyloo not so much, and it's good to see them have this flying start. Yeah, and let's not forget, Tyloo, they even made those kind of sweeping changes, right? Sw sw uh, swapping out the IGL just before the tournament starts, and I mean, it seems like it's benefited Bente. He's looked so good since moving into that IGL role. He's keeping an eye on mid. FaZe. Looking uh, like they're lacking a bit of direction here. Now I'm going to start to head over towards the A-bomb site. All five players making their way. And that's because Nico, how's he managed to get so far out? Somebody's in with the first, but he still has four more players to find as they come his way. Somebody. Well, he's not letting them out easy. Buntet, he's been given time to rotate in. And that's a good kill from Carrigan, but will it amount to anything more, Buntet? Here to try and smite them down, but now it gets interesting. He's over in the back of quad. Accurate down on the highway. He's going to find Exist, leaving it now all onto Guardian. Yeah, not looking too promising either. He's got 60 HP, but the B bomb site is open. If he books it there now, he'll be able to get a plant at least. That will help them out and definitely get the AWP secured for the next. Obviously, he has no information. The B site's open. He'll have to try his best. Shoots out the vent. They're going to know he's on his way at this point, but Guardian just needs to plant. Player towards heaven, will he be able to nail the shot? Can't do it, Captain Mo. We'll find the frag, three players survive, but now things become a little bit more interesting. At the full purchase from FaZe here, you're gonna see the Guardian AWP, of course. Somebody towards that MBK position, getting it done with the AK-47, lovely stuff there. Orb now on the CT side as well. Accurate will be picking it up. No longer Captain Mo as the main Orpa. 
Round number six, and Face really do need to wake up. They've had, sure, they're in the semi-finals, but it has not been a good tournament for them. They have looked weak. Yeah, this isn't the phase that we're used to seeing, and uh, they need to try and get out of the funk of that. Tai Lu, five rounds up right now, and they might try and assemble this boost once again. Rain pre-firing through. Just going to miss the timing. Guardian, he's going to win that first fight out, though, versus Accurate down in mid. Yeah, he got boosted up on the white truck there, and uh, I assume took the player down towards the mid boxes. That would make a lot of sense. It's a boost that's coming more and more into fashion. Indeed, I found the corpse. It's there. So that's going to yield them the first kill. Five on four now. And Cash is a very reaction-based map. Look how the player's pushing for information here. Will the CTs choose to go towards a B storage area and try and get a frag back in their favor, even some information? No is the answer right now. They're holding up defensively. And Tep looking to get in the main entrance, and that's all I wanted to see. Just try and get some intel here. A frag back in their favor. It's not going to work out. And actually almost guarantees the round now for FaZe, unless somebody can have an absolutely monstrous performance here. There's one kill towards the squeaky door, looking for a second. Guardian, lucky to be alive. Takes a bit of damage through the smoke, but there it is. That should be the kill that secures it. Exists, coming up highway, takes down Captain Mo. Yeah, DD has come rotating up. Tai Lu, they've been roaming around, they've been looking down, and now they could use somebody from this position. DD's managed himself one, but the bomb all the way inside the B-bomb site. Somebody won't get a look in edgeways, and now it is just DD here alone. Two players to find, and that is none other than Carrigan and Rain. Definitely not an easy duo to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. Somebody not rotating around, and yeah, it looks like Didi's just going to start to back away. Not able to find anything. Time ticked down. It looks like FaZe is going to be finding their first round here. Guardian, two big kills from him in that one. It was the first kill early on to Accurate. And then with the follow-up onto Buntet in main when they tried to counteract, when they tried to react. Well, we'll have a look at the frag, I'm sure, in the replay. Guardian was boosted up in T-Spawn. That found the first kill. And at that point, that's where FaZe can just really wait for mistakes to be made, wait for those reactions to come through, which they did towards the A main entrance. They were patient about 30 seconds, got their kill. Five on three, went towards the bomb site. Didn't really lose much whatsoever at that point. A couple of tiny players do survive, but they do now invest into the double orb setup. There's Roban, absolute legend of the game. And uh, he's no stranger to the IEM event himself. But uh, back to this one. Like we said, double orb setup now. Captain Mo comes into the fray. Was the main orb for so long on this squad. He's going to be playing towards B, trying to open things up, waiting for anyone to cross over. Smoke, take him out. Most orbs would maybe take a shot there, but he's just going to reposition towards the checker area in terms of the phase setup at this point. Three players in A main. Car Carrigan coming around with the bomb as well. It's just going to be exist as usual, holding towards B storage. Another default here. Very slow. I haven't seen anything that suggests they'll go for an execution here. Just going to see whether they can find these initial picks. Somebody. He's holding close to Squeaky. Is he having some fun now? Or Ooh, <laughs> finally tries to go in with the peep, but uh, you know, you can play with your crosshair all you want. Nico, gonna beat him in that fight. Mad advantage for FaZe, and it's when they find that first kill that they become so deadly. You can see it now. They've started to turn their attention over here towards this B-bomb site. There is Captain Mo, stood here alone right now, and he's going to win that first fight versus Guardian. Pressure's still on, exist. Still lies in wait. FaZe, they've changed their mind once again. Back towards the A bomb site, they look to go. Exist gets spotted crossing down at B. Let's see what they've got in mind, Harry. So far, looking quite flat again, FaZe Clan. That was the run boost they usually do towards the B area. I don't even think they got acceleration from it. He just jumps around the corner. It's the easiest kill. Uh, Captain Mo will probably get this game as he now goes to the 4-on-4. Four four. Ben Tep waiting for them. He's got no pressure towards him whatsoever. No one looking at the forklift. This is looking so average from FaZe, I have to say. There's no real utility deployed, and now it's a 3 versus one for Nico. Sure, he can win these, but with 10 seconds, I'm not so sure. There's the first kill, but doesn't even have time to plant. Even if he gets that one, he can't win, Harry. It's over. That's so devastating to see as well. Nico, four kills at the very end. And you kind of say, you know, they're looking average, and normally he's the one man who looks anything but for FaZe. And, you know, in spite of getting those four kills, just not enough time. 
Makes you wonder what's going on with FaZe right now. Tai Lu, they're going to take that 6-1 lead in their stride. Henry, the last time these two teams met on this map, Tai Lu, I think they managed four rounds in total. So they've yeah. already gone above and beyond that. Very different times, though. That obviously was when Olaf Meister was in the squad and Exist coming in. It's not necessarily his fault or the lack of firepower. He's bringing this whole overall squad. This looks so off right now. I can't really put my finger on it. This don't seem that assertive anymore. This running defaults time and time again. I prefer when Carrigan just calls a sprout off the bat. But for now, Captain. Mo picking them out the air. He will get two. Looking for the third. Not going to happen. Guardian has got the AWP. DD set with a challenge to finish things off there. He gets one through the smoke. It's now a four versus two. Somebody comes gunning out of the vents and exists. He will use the AWP, but it's not going to be enough. Two kills picked up. And it will be seven to one. I can't believe I'm saying this in favor of Tai Lu in the semi final here at IEM Sydney. FaZe just haven't arrived yet. And it's not too late, sure, but. I'm not feeling too hopeful for them as of yet. Plus, Tyler have bought out an iconic strategy. The triple AWP setup, Henry, it looks like. There's a third AWP down there on the ground. It looks like Captain Moe's eyeing it up. Why not? Let's see if they can pull this off. Guardian, he's got the AWP out for phase. And he was able to win that opening fight earlier on over here in mid. This time, he turns his attention in towards main. But in the meantime, down beneath the boost with the UMP, he has support from Accurate. Guardian's boosted up, and there's the flash, but they don't suspect Buntet. He only manages one. Accurate going to miss that shot. That was the chance at the trade, but in the meantime, Captain Mo and Didi, they've got aggressive over here at the B bomb site. They're going to get spotted. I don't think they're aware that Captain Mo resides here. This could be massive. He's going to peek round, and that's the shot on a Carrigan bomb dropped. And now they've got to go retrieve it. Exist. In the back line, desperately trying to create some space. He knows there's a man inside the bomb site, and he's also got Captain Mo to worry about. And he's just going to wait. Finds the first frag on to Acura, and the second Adidi exists. Looking to get FaZe back into this round. Captain Mo, 1v3. And what are you made of? The bomb's down. He's got time to play with. Faze are leaving this one down to the wire. Nico with the two flashbangs. He's slowly making his way through mid. Captain Mo, so many angles to keep an eye on here. 25 seconds. Oh, it's so tense, isn't it? The fact that Bomb is there, time ticking away. If he just gets one of these kills, it could be enough. But Guardian is there. And finally, someone stepping up for Faze, Harry. This time it's to exist as he gets three kills in the round, gets towards the checker area. And it felt like Tyler had done everything right there. They were trading kills at the start, hunting for that intel like we discussed before, getting towards B storage, really strong position to have the AWP, found the bomb, phase looked a little bit disorganized, but Exist saved them. And it will be seven to two now. They need to find consecutive rounds. They can't keep getting reset at this point. Luckily, there will be a Tyler Eco coming in. So maybe a chance then to really get into this game. They've once again looked very flat. I really think they should just focus on maybe more assertive plays, use that firepower like Captain Mo is right now. Can he get another with the Deagle? Not quite. Exist saving the day once again. Guardian will miss a shot and be punished by the USP of all weapons. Three on three still as somebody gets an AK. Exist, you need to be careful here. Low HP and he's gonna burn. He takes one tick and stays on nine HP. And it looks like the round will be safer now, but it certainly wasn't comfortable there. And you still feel like Tai Lu maybe even have a chance exist being painted up with so much damage. There's weapons over here in A main as well. And FaZe, I mean, look at this. Look at how scared they look, Henry. They're so worried about running into these remaining pistols on Tai Lu. This is a round that should have just been a walk in the park. And if anything, it's been one of the closest rounds we've seen. And now, but Tep. Three players about to come his way. PT50 in hand. He's been the star for Tai Lu, the star of this entire event. He's got it all to do. And only a PT50 in hand, but they've gone right by him. He tags up Nico. He's oh, going to go no. back. There's the frag on to exist. Surely no more. Carrigan, he's going to restore order. Double kill from him. And FaZe, they find a third. But my goodness, that does not inspire confidence. Certainly does not. The Deagles and P250s almost shut everything down. Exists though, like we said, saving the day again. Had the audacity to go for the third as well. That keeps them very modest in terms of their economy situation. Double orb set up again for Tyloo. 
certainly looked like the better squad so far. More coordinated, certainly. Face Clan always going to be better fraggers pound for pound, but they haven't had a chance so far. Just the aggressive pushes, the nice timed flashbangs. And what have they got up their sleeve this time? It will be the boost towards Sunro. Nice chance to chuck it in, actually. No one's going to be there to receive it just yet. Exist plays a very passive game towards this side of the map. You can see he's rising towards T-Spawn right now, waiting for anyone to push him. So he won't be going down, so we'll follow a different thread for now. Dakura will be taking to 29 HP, now zero. Nico, he's so good at finding those kills with the door. Every single time he seems to connect for him. Maybe he's starting to wake up now, and uh, we'll see one of those world -class performances from him. Somebody going for the spray down here, but will only get one. It's at the Ben Tep, the star player of Tyloo, to try and recover the situation. Gap in the slow to work with here, but it won't do him any favors. Carrigan will find the kill, four on two, and that should be the round. Yeah, the question is, uh, how much longer do Didi and Captain Mo stick around? You can see Captain Mo hanging on, hoping that someone gives something up to give them an avenue back into this, but Didi's already backed away. He's conceded the round, and they're going to let FaZe find a fourth, maybe even exist. Doesn't let them get away with saving. He spots out where both Tai Lu players are. Didi's not usually an AWPA, but uh, he's going to be just fine with it, trying to take this with him in it to the next round for Tai Lu. And Didi, he's, uh, he's not too keen on giving this up. It is just Carrigan left, and he's decided he's got better things to do. He's going to hold on to the AWP. FaZe find themselves a fourth, but at a pretty big cost. Oof. And it will be FaZe to pick up the round. This is looking better now, Harry. Three in a row. Starting to really get into the game. Have a look at the frag charts while we're here. Exists at the very top, and oh my goodness, Reigns on zero and ten. Zero and ten for one of the world's best players. He's had a pretty shocking tournament so far, like by his standards. And another disappointing one. Do you remember that game yesterday when they were, they were up 15 to five? He didn't get a single frag until the very last round. So in the spree of uh, rounds that Fnatic got, he didn't get a single kill. Yeah, so, you uh, and I have seen him, you know, kind of in this position a lot though. We cast that game as well where he went 0 and 11. It's really, uh, really been a dark time for Rain at this entire event. Hoping he can try and step things up. This round, of course, it is just that one AWP carried forward. Quintet's just going to get burnt out down in mid. Things maybe he does for him. That's the first there kill for him. Round of applause. Let's go. <laughs> well, he's on the board. You know, he was, looking like, uh, he was looking like more of a drizzle, but maybe the rain is here. Yeah. Well, there we go. That should be a nice opener for them. Now the execute's coming in. This is looking better, Harry. This is what we want to see. Some coordination, some Guardian prowess, as he manages to find the shot there with the AWPS. DD down towards CT area. Somebody, oh my goodness, get wrecked! As he'll get his head ripped off there. There's one AWP remaining. That's going to be towards the CT truck. But now a four on two. Should be the fifth round for FaZe. Yeah, you certainly hope so. Ooh, Nico, that was nice. Cheeky one tap on the Captain Mo, and just accurate trying to hold on to the AWP. Now can he get away with it? No, he cannot. Guardian is certainly warming up, and I hope this is a bit of a foreshadowing. There's a big smile on Rain. There he is, the one kill hero. He's certainly getting a lot of love from the crowd, so maybe that's going to help pump him up a bit. Well, here we go. Another buy round. FaZe getting back in this one. That's actually four in a row now after being down at 1.7 to one. So here we go. Guardian, I love it when he starts putting on a show in these big games as well. You can just feel something horrible is coming. Rain. Going for the spray, trying to shut down any aggression. That's the run boost we talked about. Guardian normally pre fires the checkers on that time, even if it's smoke, sometimes actually hits the shot. Round number 13, coming to the last few here. Tyloo still in the lead, though. I didn't think I'd be saying that. Round number 13 here on Cash, one of the best matter phases where they feel like they can bully anyone. And we'll get to the one with the 20 mark in terms of utility. A little bit left over, one smoke for Tyloo, a couple of incendiaries. General formation will be focusing towards middle for phase here. Got a player boosted up. That's got to be Rain. Smoke the connector. And there will be two players towards the highway position, somebody in Ventet to defend. And Carrigan to assist. This is a big fight to win. Smoke goes down, and that's going to hold Guardian off the angle. Now, Carrigan. I was going to say, does he decide to maybe go through? But the bomb on his back, he's going to decide against it. Doubles background, they're going to try and boost up Brain and Guardian. 
Tai Lu, they've actually conceded mid, given it up. They've rotated three players over towards a B bomb site, and that could be disastrous. That's 35 seconds here. And FaZe looking like they want to try and play into the A bomb site. Rain secured control of mid. It's all onto Acura, and he hits this first shot. That's the bomb dropped. It's bought them a little bit of time to work with. Rotation's already coming in from the rest of Tai Lu. Spotted him out over on the forklift, and now he's fighting for his life. Carrigan. Gonna find the first kill onto the entry, but somebody's still over in quad. 10 seconds on the clock here, and somebody's gonna fall. Oh, Rain and Carrigan. They've opened up the site, and suddenly it's Captain Mo. He's been struggling for Tai Lu. One versus three, and Guardian's gonna put the nail in the coffin at phase six to seven now. Getting right back into it. A little bit of a slow start, Rain on 3 and 10 now, starting to find some form that I think Tyler probably eco for the last round. They've currently got $3,500. They can invest a little bit here with the maximum loss bonus where I go for some, some Deagle, something like that, a bit of utility, try and push towards B. Trade some frags out, they're going to go for CZs, pretty much across the board. Four of those, a couple of smokes. With the smokes, that suggests they might take a bit more passive approach and try and treat it like a gun round, hope that FaZe make a huge mistake here. Exist with Guardian, again, try to get that first pick. Rain trying to do the same thing. Just going to try and get beat that smoke as the reload comes in. He might find himself in a spot of bother that. DD pushed up and, oh, this position to CZ, so filthy. As you can see, Exist didn't see it coming. Where's the utility, boys? Where are the Molotovs? Nothing at all, and down they go. Will he get out alive, though? Somebody certainly won't rain, ready and waiting. Now, when Tet's come to bail him out with that smoke, he's trying to go for the AK. He doesn't manage to pick it up, so he has to back away. And Guardian just homing down the angle, wants to deny them that rifle if he can. Eco. Over here in Squeaky, it looks like Faye's going to try and now turn their attention out towards they say bomb site, but Tai Lu, they're one step ahead. They've rotated everyone here up towards A. With 50 seconds left, Faye's, they're going to be walking into a stack here. Slowly but surely they go. And here we go, Tai Lu, this is their chance. Four on four inside the bomb site, an even fight. But there's Nico to open up. Accurate still tucked away, finds one with the CZ. Nico's gonna trade it out, and now it's Didi and Buntet. 25 seconds on the clock. Buntet answers back with one, but they can't stop Nico. He's gonna keep that round the way of FaZe, seven to seven, all tied up. And this has been a very, very good comeback here from FaZe. Yeah, it's good to see them bouncing back. They're that sort of team, they're having a really rough game. It can be difficult to actually recover, but great to see the likes of Nico and Rain getting back out of that zero and 10. Nico doing what he does best, just picking off heads left, right, center. And we're going to the final round of the first half, ladies and gentlemen, nothing separating these two teams. Two will come out on top. Will it be the double orb set up a Tai Lu or the powerhouse of Guardian? As he goes towards that B storage area once again, trying to open things up. Somebody trying to beat the players here to the first box. He does trade out a kill. Acura trying to challenge as well. Can't hit the shot. Existence looks so good this half. One of the shining lights of the FaZe Clan here. Going for his third. Can't quite connect it, but all of a sudden it comes through. Oh my goodness, Nico, it really is getting warmed up now. Tai Lu are in a lot of trouble. They have awoken the beast, it feels like. Here's Captain Mo 1v3. Now he's had a pretty quiet tournament, all things considered, pretty quiet string of events. This would be unreal, though. He's going to go sneaking in. Nico keeps an eye on it, and he's going to win the fight. FaZe Clan, they managed to find themselves an eighth there at the very end of the half. Well, there it is, 8-7. Decent comeback from FaZe. It was looking very, very dicey at points. But they may be right back in the lead now. We'll see whether they can continue this form in the second half. Do not go anywhere. We'll take a quick break.
It was looking so good for Tyloo early on, but now FaZe have awoken. They've won the last seven rounds in a row to take an 8-7 scoreline at the end of the first half. Henry, do we see Tyloo pulling this back in the second? I don't think so. They have awoken the beast. F FaZe just look fierce right now. As soon as they started to get back on the board, as soon as Exist carried them to the position where they could actually get some finances, break the economy down of Tyloo, it got very grim very quickly. Nico starting to come to life. Guardian is hitting some insane shots. But sure, it's not done yet. Anyone's game. Tyler won the first pistol. And uh, we'll see if they can get the second here. I'll have a look at the buy. There will be a P250 available for Acura. A couple of smokes suggest they do go towards that A site. Flashbangs available there. And there will be a three man stack from phase towards middle. Bomb left at the mouth of the A site. Nico will be exploring for a bit of information that jump. Shoulder peak does allow him just to get a bit of intel. Very unlikely he even takes damage. So he did spot one. Oh, Carrigan towards the highway. Rain at the sandbags towards mid. And now, just playing for information. Very slow approach from Tyler. Not going to be expending any of their utility just yet. Captain Mo the squeaky door. Somebody trying to like, drop his weapon, make a sound cue, try and bait out of smoke perhaps. Quite smart. As they'll boost the player up towards mid now. Captain Mo might just be left there for a flank play if they want to go for a mid split here. And now Rain and Carrigan join with Exist. This is quite the trio to try and take on over in mid. Tai Lu might be walking into a bit of a slaughter. Exist and Cash struggle to name a more iconic duo. He's going to be holding it from Aziv and Tep. He's the first man in. He spots out Exist and then you have Rain tucked away here playing the bait and switch. Carrigan now emerges and while they try to focus him down, it's just the slaughter over in mid. Accurate going to fall as well. Suddenly it's all eyes on Captain Mo, And he has toppled Nico, but that's it for him. Carrigan's there to trade and FaZe, they head into this second half swinging. They win themselves the pistol round. Lovely stuff there from FaZe. Good crossfire, just what they needed to secure this map, I would say. But uh, Carrigan, he sets it all up. Rain knocks him down from the sandbags and uh, Exist joins him from the connector. And it should be the force by here from Tyler. We'll see the Deagles come out, the CZ to smoke the flashbangs. Uh, I would say go towards A, just smoke towards the highway, flash through and see if you can swarm um, that bombsite holder. It's normally Nico there. They're going to boost the player up towards middle, see if they want to go for a faster approach. The Deagle will be met by Carrigan, who has had a very good tournament so far. He's got that iconic silenced M4 of his, one of the few players still using it. And uh, gets to get a lovely shot there to open things out. Five and four in favor of FaZe. Exists looking to farm some cash here with the MP9. He'll be up and close and personal towards middle. And here's Nico. Got a smoke behind him, so he's fine from... The entrance of Ape exists, just waiting for his opportunity to push through there. They're going to go ahead and re-smoke mid for Ty Loop. They've already lost Captain Mo. Nico going to keep the aggression going. Ooh, didn't spot accurate there. Now he's got a chance. He's going to swing the door open. They hear him exist, turns his attention on round. It there's Deeg not able to find anything just yet. There's Carrigan in with the first from Highway. Two kills to his name now. This silenced M4 picking up frags left and right. As it looks to bid Ty Lu a swift good night. It's all on to somebody. And while he has managed one, you imagine this comes to an end for him now. Nico's going to be the man to finish this round off. Phase, they keep four players alive. And they've locked in a 10th round. Certainly have for Nico coming up at Ty Lu now. Phase should be getting the 11 to 7 line. Remember, Ty Lu, Harry, we're up, what, 7 1 in the first half? They really haven't got much together. It's been. A very clinical performance since FaZe started to awaken themselves. Um, for anyone who's not been following the tournament throughout, group stages, FaZe look up and down. They actually lost to Renegades and really didn't look their best. And it wasn't so much like players were not performing, it's just the overall coordination was off. They couldn't really seem to penetrate bomb sites correctly or trade out frags. It was a really um, weird scenario to watch FaZe play like that. But this looks better now. Big semi-final game. It's weird to see Ty Lu here, to be honest. And great opportunity for them to showcase what they're made of as Nico goes hunting for frags here. He'll be going towards middle. And he's in a lot of trouble here as he gets dinked up. I don't think he'll get more than one. So they get a UMP. And somebody does hear a player push towards that beast or a Jerry. That's the bomb going down. But Guardian has got a flank coming through. Exists just with the silenced USP here. And somebody could get the knife. Oh, hello! Guardian. Too fast for that one. Flicks around and takes him down. Yeah, you aren't, you aren't going to sneak up on Guardian like that so easily. His spidey senses start tingling and now... Oh, come on! Come on! 
<laughs> I was wondering when we'd see that. Save it for tomorrow, please. <laughs> there we go. Louder. Is that all you've got? I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Let's get into the next round, shall we? <laughs> it will be round 19 here and uh, the full gun round, of course. AKs in the hands, but they are being dropped. Decent trade there, at least going exist in the initial encounter towards middle. Rain will be the one to pick up the frag. Four and four does technically favor the tees. They fully commit towards the A side. Nico's here, though. They've been able to get by him, and I think Captain Mo does spot the barrel. They have an idea. Nico's trying to lock it down, but Quintet, there's a smoke there, my friend. He's going to go ahead and find that first. Bomb now planted. Tai Lu with a man advantage in phase. They're usually so good in these retake scenarios. Rain's going to try and lead the charge. He's hiding in the smoke. Carrigan spotted out Captain Mo, but he gets beheaded. Rain, he's through the smoke. But he's going to get traded out swiftly. Guardian 1v3 in this round. Looks like it might elude phase. Tai Lu. Want to come back with their eighth round. And Guardian, he's just going to have to hold on to the orb. Gets a couple on the exit. But an 8 11 scoreline now for Tai Lu. They're making this competitive. That's how many rounds they got versus the last two times they've played phase combined. You're absolutely right there. This is a much better looking Tyler. You mentioned at the beginning of this one, they've changed some roles up coming into this tournament. Um, the in-game leader position completely changed up. Can you explain a little bit more as to what your findings have found? Yeah, I mean, you know, recently there was the interview with, uh, with Acura. He was, you know, formerly the IGL, uh, and you know, they actually switched up. They made Buntet the IGL. Now, the way that they call is super interesting. You know, it's kind of like a mixture of they use Chinese and English, so... Uh, that sounds very confusing. Yeah, I, I don't know how that works. I can't imagine what that's like. Supposedly, the actual... Uh, tactics themselves are called in English, but they use all the Chinese names for the locations. Wow. Well, so it seems to be working, so you can't it argue. It definitely does, fact, yeah. The first time I recall them in a semi-final of a big tournament. So uh, we'll see whether they can get a bit deeper here. We'll be their first round here. In the second half, 11 to 8 now. AK's still in hand. No AWP on the T side, but a double AWP set up for FaZe. It'll be Nico and Guardian, of course. Quite the dastardly duo. As uh, round number 20 comes in, existed Nika now on the side. Nika playing towards that quad position. Uh, somebody lines up a smoke towards the quad boxes. Does take a lot of damage for his troubles there. Bomb still down in T spawn, so you won't see a full commitment anytime soon. Just trying to bait out some CT utility. Goes some presence to this side of the map. And Rain, he helps himself to the B storage area. Takes down DD. And that will be the opening pick. He's done enough now. He doesn't have to hunt for anything more. He doesn't have to sit in the sunroom. He's given them the man advantage. Now make them uh, commit to the next move. Yeah, tai Lu there, now the ones in the hot seat, they have to try and work for something. Crisscross smokes go down in mid, but Guardian, he's already there. He's peeking over the top from his watchtower. He's managed himself one. Now Captain Mo to try and trade, looks to sneak through. Guardian, he's going to take the fight and he's going to miss that first shot. Not given a chance for a second, but that's where Nico swoops in and saves the day. It's accurate and somebody, two versus four. They've settled on the B-bomb site. They've got 20 seconds to play with. They've spotted out Carrigan, but now Rain emerges. And it's accurate, 1v3, 15 seconds. And he's tagged down a low. That nade on Nico could spell the end of this round for Tai Lu. Bomb planted. He's gonna try and tuck himself away on headshot. Three players to find. He's able to tag up Rain. There's the first kill, but the nade comes through. And FaZe. They're going to find themselves a 12th round. That's going to be quite a difficult one to recover from for Tai Lu, considering that that will be the reset. Luckily, the bomb does go down, but they only get $1,400 on top of that. So it will be 12-8 the phase now as they home in. And what feels like a victory for them in this first map, that will be the double up set up taken into the next round. It will be Exist and Nico to survive. And about $3,000 per play on the Tai Lu force. He's got DD there with... Enough to buy an AWP and nothing else. They could go for a force buy with one orb, CZs, maybe a couple of AKs. It looks like they go for a more conservative partial approach here, just with the pistols. So Glocks, PD-50s, CZs, a bit of armor, a couple of smokes, flashbangs. Maybe go for a full execution here, Harry. Just try and get towards that A side, drop all the smokes, get a plant down. That would probably be my call at this point. And this is why I'm the best. He knows what he's, he knows what he's doing, right? There it is. The smoke's coming in. I'm sure not all of Sydney would agree with you there, Henry. Yeah, I know. But, uh, <laughs> Probably not in this particular arena. 
There's Nico in with the first kill. And Tai Lu, a little bit slow to get out, really taking their time. And you can't take your time versus FaZe. This is a very, very quick mop up. Nico and Carrigan doing the damage. Oh, the smokes do get deployed, but no bomb goes down. FaZe will ready for it. 13 to 8 now. As time is ticking away for Tyloo, they had such a fantastic start, 7-1 up. But it's been nothing but agony since FaZe arrived. Four AKs, a UMP, very comfortable run there for FaZe. Remember, Inferno is next, and that's not like it's a wild pick. I think Tyloo maybe should have gone for Dust2, something like that, just kind of have a chance where a map where FaZe might not be comfortable. You choose Inferno, they've played that a lot. Dust2, it could be right up in the air, you have no idea. That's very true, and you know, especially when you consider how FaZe did versus Greyhound, right? When you look yeah, exactly. back, how why, the... would, why wouldn't you pick that? But, uh, you know, Tyloo, very, very proficient Inferno team as well. And uh, we know that FaZe are partial to letting those games go the distance. That's true. That is true. Big fan of their theatrics over on Inferno. But right now, five rounds is all that separates these two teams. A lot of people have written off Tyloo. They want to try and prove all those naysayers wrong. Looking like they want to try boosting up into mid. It's accurate to lead the way. Will he be ready for Carrigan, who holds close? Nico on the highway has an AWP of his own. Flashed him back. Accurate going to lose the opening door. Oh, he has to trade, and he's going to land that shot. Nico's forced off the angle. He can't quite find the equalizer, but he's going to go back. He's going to go back for it. Oof. Very fast, but uh, no connection. Still a four and four. Chance here for Tyler. The time is ticking away. 40 seconds on the clock. It looks like an A finish is likely. Didi towards middle. He'll be joined by Captain Mo. Utility is sparse though, and they're dropping like flies now. Guardian takes down another. Four versus three. Been tapped with the bomb towards A main. Somebody is squeaky. Captain Mo by himself, and he'll have no targets to find as he creeps towards the highway. This one has to be a kill. It is. Bentec connects it. And now Nico, the last line of defense. He's got the most awkward weapon for the job. At least gets one. That down goes down to the two on two. Captain Mo of a real nice flank there. But he's surely done for us. Reigns waiting towards middle. 1v1. A bomb planted inside the bomb site. And somebody. He's going to show up with the orb, Tai Lu. They're going to move on to a ninth round as he gets it done in the 1v1 versus Rain. There it is. Tai Lu managed to keep one player alive. That means, sure, they win, but uh, money will still be sparse. They do manage to save the AWP, of course, but a Khalil, a UMP, a few compromises in the utility as well. If they can win this round, then they've already got a chance at the comeback. As Bentet sets himself up for the jump on the white truck here, they'll go for the same boost Guardian did in the first half and takes down Guardian and takes his own medicine there. And boy, is it bitter as they get that opening pick. Five on four now. So he didn't see that coming, did he? And Boost, like I said, it was in the meta for so long that it kind of went out of fashion for a couple of years, but it seems to be right back. Round 23, a great start for the Chinese squad. Yeah, they've got the early man advantage accurate, even saying how he wanted to move into a more supporting role with the AWP. I guess you could support by just killing people left and right. He's going to get boosted up here. Into mid, throws down the smoke. Nico stepped up to take Guardian's place, has the AWP in hand, and Accurate going to miss that shot. Nico, does he go back? He's on following. He doesn't want to give mid up. Even when he gets Molotov off the angle, he's still going to stick around. He might just get rewarded for it. Captain Mo offers himself up, and he's going to get plucked from mid. Now it's rain. Pretty quiet game by his standards, but here they come, and there's just going to be a complete downpour of frags. He's still going to keep on going. Reigns on three, and suddenly it's accurate. All on his own. The rest of Tyloo have fallen. The bomb's down in checkers. Nothing Rain has to do with this one. 20 seconds, Jaw. He could be a little bit greedy and go for the frag. It'd probably still be fine. But let's run that clock down. He's already done the hard work. He's had a rough game so far. But he's bringing it right back. You can see 12 kills now. It's not looking like there's such a huge disparity on the scoreboard. 26 for Nico, just to know. Another great game by him in this tournament as the time will expire round for phase and you need to make sure you hold on to that weapon accurate will indeed he'll save the all for the next round but money 
It's non-existent now, Harry. You're gonna have to force by here. You can't allow FaZe to go 15 to nine, surely. They've got an AWP. They've got a CZ to be dropped as well. I, I would say you have to invest all the cash you've got and just hope that AWP can deliver. Into the replay of uh, Reign's antics. Wasn't still like as crisp as I'd expect from him, you know? Like if there were frags where he wasn't, they weren't really looking at him. Um, you'd expect the pro of his caliber to get those frags, but still not as convincing as you'd like, perhaps. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the vintage train we're used to seeing, but as long as he gets the job done. Exactly. I'm fine with that. And while speaking of getting the job done, Tyler, you want to try and do exactly that with this play in towards the A-bomb site. As simple as it gets, that this time boosted up. That's going to be Nico. That's the curveball thrown in from FaZe. And from atop the boost, how much work can Nico get done? They're going to go running into him. And there's the spray down. Two kills and a third. He's not going to go down just yet. Accurate manages one. But he still has so many kills to find. And Carrigan will finish him off. FaZe. They're going to reach map point here on cash, 15 to 9. Well, there it is. That couldn't have been more perfect for FaZe. The fact they get Nico in that boost position, it's just the complete counter. You can see they've dropped all their smokes, and their objective at that point is to focus towards the fourth step, get towards that bomb site. You just got to hope that no one's up there that quickly. And Nico absolutely is. He gets three kills, shuts the round down, find, finds map point, and his only second stage loss bonus, Harry. So they're going to get $1,900 per player. That means Deagle, CZ, one SMG. It's map point. I think we all know where this one is going. Phase now firing on all cylinders, should be able to close this one out. They did wake up after the 7-1 deficit, and Tyler didn't really get much done at all off there. You can see this flurry of rounds they've got towards the tail end of the tee, and then they've got almost everything here in the second half. And what was looking to be a very exciting, competitive game kind of has dropped off towards the end. That's the Nico effect. Top of the board right now, Guardian wants to try and play catch-up. He's going to miss that kill, maybe they're in with a shot. They still have to try and topple Rain and Carrigan, who have an iron grasp on this beep on site. Carrigan does fall, but Exist is already in. I like this from Tyler. They've slowed the pace. They've boosted up somebody into the vents. They turn their attention back out towards middle. But Rain might try and force the issue. He's gone through. Nico. He's dropped somebody down in mid accurate. How much longer does he hold this for? Misses oh. the shot on a Rain, and that would have been a big kill to find. It's Captain Mo, 1v3, and Nico. Not going to let it happen, 16 to 9 here in map number one. Well, there it is, FaZe Clan looking much better. The second half, that's a team that can win this tournament. They were looking so shaky, I wasn't feeling confident for them whatsoever. Tai Lu, at least they're putting numbers on the board though. If they can keep that up and get momentum in the second, there might be a chance. We do move on to Inferno next, where FaZe are no strangers. 1-0 right now, maybe one more map to go, who knows? We'll take a quick break and come back with the analysts.